and welcome to this webinar on uh, on your physical and mental health and and some tips on planning. I'm Pramod Chandrasekhar. I'm delighted to be here uh, in your presence. And we've got a good uh, strength of people joining us from different places and a very, very warm welcome to you. Uh, I really thank G GLS for organizing this seminar. This seminar is all about you and I becoming better persons. That's all it's all about. Uh, I hope at the end of this brief hour, we will become in some way become a better person. And to that end, I want you to um, I know, keep a notebook and pen with you if you don't mind, because there may be some thoughts, not just thoughts from me, but some thoughts that triggered in your mind that uh, you want to practice. And uh, I just want to say a few more things before I'll start sharing a slide with you is that, uh, you know, become a better person. Sometimes we add some objectives, adjectives to the person uh, and all beginning with P. I'll just give you an example. We think I want to become instead of just a better person, full stop. I want to become a more powerful person with power over people. If God gives you, that's fine, but that should not be our raging ambition. Some people think I want to become a more prosperous person pursuing profit. Uh, those adjectives, again, if God gives you, it's fine, but that should not be things we should pursue. We should just become a better person. And then some people think we would, I want to become a more popular person. And that popularity is actually a phony popularity. When I say phony, I mean phone, uh, because popular persons are on the phone all the time in, in various apps and uh, phone calls, etc. No. When I say better person, the right adjectives to add, according to me, uh, again, beginning with P, is become a purposeful person. A purposeful person with the purity of purpose. That's what is, is really exciting in becoming a better person. Become a prayerful person. A person who is prayerful and with peace derived from long hours of prayer. And a patient person. A patient person giving strength to making yourself persistent, actually. I'm just going to quickly share a slide with you. And please tell me if you can see the slide now. Yes, you can. By the way, you can just keep uh, chatting here. You can. Uh, I want to become a peaceful person, Dr. Anuradha says. I enjoy your chats. And uh, I look forward to become a prayerful person, patient and persistent person. Thank you, Stephen. I can see you're placing, uh, you're paying attention. That's really good. So that's what this is all about, you know. Um, and uh, we're going to give a whole lot of tips. All of them are not my own. And uh, I will also be taking tips from you and broadcasting it uh, to the, the rest. And thank you, uh, Hansel, for saying that it is visible. These are the objectives for today. I want to talk about a word that is being used a lot, that this is the new normal. Yes, Raju, we need to be patient. That's so true. And then big picture thinking is what I want to talk about, because I think big picture thinking, managing stress, positivity, they are all about mental health. The major part of my presentation will be about mental health, because I think that's how it flows. Uh, that's how everything else flows from there. Fine. And then a little bit about physical health. And be ready. When it comes to physical health, I'll share a few tips. But I'm going to ask you also to share a few tips on the chat. Not tips that uh, you feel are good, but tips that you are practicing. OK? And uh, because uh, let me let's lower my voice and tell you a secret. We are all, especially me, very good at preaching. Little wanting in the area of practicing, but we are good at preaching. So let's become a practicing person also. Fine. And then we'll talk a few tips about working effectively in this pandemic time, this lockdown time when we are working from home, how to work from work from home with more work life balance and being effective in your work in the new normal. That's what the agenda is all about. I have limited time. Let's just plunge into it. OK, here's just some lighter vein. You know, uh, I just look at those jokes there. I'm in that condition very often. Don't ask me to stand up. 
I might be like that person, their business on the top, comfy on the bottom. So recently I was in a service and the worship leader looked really sharp and uh, wonderful while he was till he got a little carried away and he stood up and we could see that he was wearing a glittering shirt and shorts beneath. So <laughs> a lot of jokes are happening at this time. Let's see the humor in it. Let's see, you know, the 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 nice side of it. And uh, let's move on. Just a few jokes. Uh, there is some statistics put out by Forbes magazine. You know, when we talk about the new normal, what do you mean by the new normal? They Forbes are just brilliant, right? For those of you in corporate, uh, so you might be like me addicted to Forbes. So, you know, this is they did this survey almost immediately after the lockdown began. It was a global survey. I believe the average worker starts working at 8.32, ends work at 5.38, but keeps going even beyond that, especially during the pandemic times, intermittently till very late. But this is the average. And uh, the most productive days, I believe, are Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Just keep that in mind. Those of you who want to do some very serious work. Telephone calls in this season are up 230%. If you used to make 10 telephone calls, you're making 23 now. If you used to make 100, you're making 230. Customer relationship uh, with the customer. We thought we are cut off from the customers. People are making extra efforts up 176%. Email up 57%. Chat always used to be there, but it's more now, 9% more. So... It's a frenzy of activity. This new normal, we've got used to it. But if you remember in the uh, second half of March, the early days of April, we were just wondering. We were plunged in uncertainty. We're just wondering, you know, uh, what it is, how long will it last, and how to get adjusted to it. And uh, in fact, we started some good habits at that time, especially prayer time and uh, reading um, some uh, reading extra, doing some hobbies, learning something, being very intentional and purposeful. But I think we've kind of got used to it now. That's my hypothesis. I think we've got used to it now. I think this new normal has become what we call in corporate BAU, business as usual. And uh, But then it's time to remind us and ourselves, and that's why the GLS organizers have this beautiful seminar, that we have to take care of ourselves. We have to be intentional. We have to be a better person with stronger mental health and stronger physical health and then working maybe not harder but definitely smarter and being more effectful. Our impact should increase uh, during this time. I like what Raju has posted there. He said the new normal is sometimes restless until we adjust to the schedule of new normal. Sometimes I feel restless is good, Raju. I like Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, where it says the spirit of God itself was restless. Something good normally comes out of restless, restlessness. And we all, our entire creation came out of that restlessness. So I'm trying to say in the fact that we can retain that feeling of restlessness because it always leads to improvement. Let me move on. The next few slides are all about our mental health, okay? And what should be our new plans for the new normal? The first thing I want to tell you that routine and structure are very important. I'm not saying be too rigid. I'm saying have a plan and a purpose for each day. We have forgotten that. And friends, as I told you, I just want you to keep your a little a pad and a paper, I mean a pen and a pad uh, with you. I want you to note down things that you feel you should do, which you're not doing. This is not a preachy session. This is a practical session. So please uh, just uh, note that down. And as Stephen says, you know, the new normal is about bringing out the better in me. We started off being better uh, people due, when, when it started, you know, in end March and April, uh, April etc. But I think we've got too used to it and we've become worse off than before in a sense. So set up a structure, have a plan and purpose for the day. The other tip that I want to give you, I find it very difficult, but it's a great tip. I know friends who do it so well. 
that make very make it very sure that you don't lunge for the phone the first thing you get up in the morning you know let it be prayer time have a solid prayer time you got so much time on your hands now because the commute has reduced you should agree about that so reach out for prayer reach out to god don't reach out to your phone if you're not doing that if you're a creature of habit and the first thing that you get up by the way it's not a good idea to sleep with a phone under the pillow or with the phone near you it's better to keep the phone as far away as possible and uh, reach for reach out to god through prayer before you reach out to the phone plan and prioritize already talked talked about that it's good even those in the ministry those involved in church work and all have time i'm still calling that work okay uh, have time between work time and home time i've done surveys as part of my career exercise uh, with a lot of christians around the country and the one thing that comes out in priorities is you know your time with god number 1 your time with family number 2 and then your work and your career number 3 your ministry career etc comes number 3 that's the consensus i've seen around mature christians all over is that your priorities create boundaries between work time and home time i love this and i do it you know this is my workplace i've created that little bubble at my home create a specific place in your home where you work just a little tip avoid your bedroom with the bed sheets around you it's too tempting let that place not be your bedroom and one other thing i want to say stay connected with all the people that you work with even though there's no work just call them at least once a day uh, in corporate we call it stakeholders make that stakeholder wheel and know who are the people you have to be connected with every day and the reason i'm saying this is there's a phrase called fomo f o m o you can note that down fomo means fear of missing out when you're working away from people where you're working alone at home there is this fear that you're missing out on something and uh, you have to um be connected with people to avoid that fear of missing out you think that i'll be all alone and you may be an introvert who likes to be all alone but you have to connect in some way or the other and varun i completely agree with you that people i've seen the stress and the fatigue of working 16 18 hours a day that's really um, not too good now try a digital detox i wonder if you heard of that we are full of looking at the screen the whole day this age is called the screen of screens you know so the whole day looking at screens is not very good uh, it's good i i love using the bible online but i prefer using a book i somehow it's more re- relaxing so i have the bible in book form that's more relaxing to me sometimes i write i have a, a writing pad always with me and uh, i write so as far as possible because we have an excess of screens try to look at ways at least maybe an hour a day you can start with when you can tell yourself no digital no screen screen of screens try to get out at least once a day now you're telling me promote that's not a good habit with all the um covid-19 virus around and i know i want you to be safe but there's a balcony there's a corridor even this morning i got up i went out uh, in my corridor outside my house there was a cool breeze there it was very refreshing at least once a day you need to do that rather than being cooped up at home and focus on the silver lining positive thinking now i want to talk to you about uh, pastor i love to talk uh, what past call him pastor john maxwell i use that word even in corporates when i'm training people because you know is a pastor in san diego before becoming a world famous management guru and uh, he popularized that phrase a lot big picture thinking what does big picture thinking mean it means thinking from a larger perspective what does big picture thinking mean it means removes the focus on the problem and looking at a pattern when you go above that your some of us are very anxious about a particular problem if you go higher 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 like an eagle you look more at the pattern than on the problem and then instead of focusing on you 
it focuses on all people and you see there are many other people going through the same thing that's big picture thinking instead of focusing on the present you're very agitated about what's happening right now you know just focus on the trend things like this have happened in the past it could happen in the future let's look at the trend and you know christians are doing a lovely thing a lot of them i know around the place are reading the book of revelation it's very comforting disturbing you might think but when you read it and the future that god has set out with it that everything is god in its god's hands and revelation makes it very clear that god is on the throne when that happens it's actually uh, you look at the trend rather of what is happening and looking at the trend many people are saying don't be disturbed be comforted that god is actually going to intervene now how do you and i get into big picture thinking pastor john maxwell gives these four tips which i've left out for you by the way this slide will come to you as a gift as a handout so um you don't have to note down what's on the slide but note down what you're going to do okay don't strive for certainty be comfortable with ambiguity big picture people think i know i said structure etc yes you should have a plan but you should be ready to be flexible when the plan has to be changed so big picture thinking are not very hung up on certainty all the time they're comfortable with the uh, um uh, experience and uh, jacob i agree with you i did the same in our family prayers we did the same reading both daniel and then revelation very revealing during these days uh, etc and steven yes the prayer of uh, jabez give yourself permission to expand you already ran steven to my fourth point but let me come there <laughs> learn from experience it was winston churchill uh, used those very memorable words in the in world war 2 by the way was much more disparaging than what we are facing right now right it was very disconcerting it was people were so scared of their lives especially in england and it was a crisis and he used his beautiful words he says never waste a good crisis and uh, so you should learn from these experience just think that god as per his promise uh, he will not test you beyond what you can bear you know so learn from these experience this is a learning from this experience i like the song which says he's still working on me to make me what i ought to be it took him just a week to make the sun the moon the stars jupiter mars he's still working on me you have to learn from every experience gain insight from a variety of people it's time folks most of us here on the call are adults you've got to sometimes learn from the little children too they have some wonderful perspectives at least in technology they're better than us even in perspectives they're better than us but yes gain insights have a learning attitude when you're learning from other people it improves your big picture thinking and give yourself uh, permission as stephen uh, also mentioned Uh, to expand your world if you want to be a big picture thinking you'll have to go against the flow society wants to keep people in boxes these are john maxwell's words most people are mentally married to the status quo they don't want to change at all but big picture thinking uh, look imagine you're stuck in traffic and imagine you have a drone which gives you a picture of what's happening in other places you can see different ways in which you can reach your goal that is big picture thinking the example that uh, john maxwell gives is uh, you should read it later i won't spend too much time talking about this but the chief librarian 2240 years ago the chief librarian of the biggest library in the ancient world 240 bc before christ eratosthenes the greek person who was the chief librarian of the library of alexandria in egypt he deployed big picture thinking in a very famous way he heard about this well in cyane in egypt he traveled there on the longest day of the year and he saw the sun was shining directly into the depth of the well which means it was exactly above at that point of time and he realized but back home in alexandria there were shadows cast by the pillars which means the sun was not exactly overhead on the longest day of the year and then of course he did the calculation he debunked the flat earth theory and then um, which for many many years and even today some people still believe and then he also calculated with surprising uh, uh, accuracy the circumference of the earth 
big picture thinking makes you you know a superb thinker it makes you a mature person he discovered he calculated the circumference of the earth in those days which is almost accurate just 400 miles difference uh just by big picture thinking let's move on the other thing i want to very specifically talk to you is practical tips these are all my tips i'm not taken it from any textbook uh things that you can do you know the one thing i want to tell you first is an untidy workplace a desk or a table you know whether you realize it or not it it creates stress so where you're sitting right now just look around how tidy is it if it's untidy it, it's kind of gives stress to your mind things just pile up it gives stress an untidy room itself gives stress to you make sure you're spending your whole day at home make sure it's neat and tidy don't become ocd obsessive about your room being clean but it has should have a minimum amount of cleanliness that will reduce your stress it's a practical tip that i'm giving you and uh, reduce your workload so many people i've uh, i talked to a ceo who proudly uh, said you know actually our productivity has increased during the lockdown time of course his eye was on profits but uh, no you have to be reasonable about loading yourself in workload especially uh, we think it's a christian trait uh, that we should always say yes we should say yes to the right things but if you feel that it's more than what you can handle it's better to say no than to say yes and do a shoddy job at it so i'm asking you friends be conscious about it how much is your bandwidth now if you're a person like me who finds it very difficult to say no pray about it and ask god to give you that insight and wisdom learn to say no and reduce your workload you reduce your workload automatically you know your stress will decrease right now i'm telling you soon after this seminar you can list out the things that you do and prioritize and i want to talk a little bit about the aizen uh, varun you're very much like me uh varun you know <laughs> saying yes all the time true now the eisenhower matrix just uh, google that and you'll get more information on that president of the united states who was of course in the army before that is a president between 1954 to 61 he developed this matrix along the scale of urgent and important you know you have to list out all the things that you do it will fall into one of these four boxes if it's important and urgent do that okay if it is not so urgent but important then you have time you have to plan how you will do it and do a good job i like those people who plan on a weekly uh, basis by the way your plan has to be the big master plan okay uh, and then a monthly plan and then a weekly plan and then a daily plan and your daily plan has to come the previous evening before you sign off for the day you have to plan what you have to do for the next day so that's the second box the plan if it is urgent but not important that means it's not in your priorities learn to uh, give it to someone else whom it would be a priority give a chance for someone else to uh, develop don't hold everything to yourself learn to delegate and in fact uh, empower and if it is not urgent not important please eliminate it from your life uh, rajiv i'm taking your advice <laughs> he's saying so very nice advice saying if we say pray about it then then becomes a good excuse of not doing anything that's brilliant rajiv that's our christian lingo we'll say pray about means we we are going to forget about it so no 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 i don't mean that kind of pray about it you list down all your tasks and put it in one of these four boxes and uh, you know you will learn how to prioritize right now there's an easy way of uh, remembering it it's four d's the four boxes are do defer delegate or destroy so all your tasks you should either do it now defer delegate destroy what if i'm a child of the procrastination age i always put off important things i want to talk to you about that uh, book you know uh, it says eat that frog by brian tracy you know this book is a brilliant book to uh, just read the summary if you can please note that down eat that frog all he says is you know at the beginning of the day uh, you do the task that you hate to do the most 
because it's a task that you have been deferring for a long time because we have a tendency to do the simple task the easy task the task that we enjoy and if we have deferred it for a long time and it is still one of our tasks that means it's become like an ugly frog that you hate to eat you know most of us some people do of course like frog but most of us hate to eat frogs especially a live frog he's saying start your day by doing that and immediately you have conquered your procrastination so write down what is my frog for many days my wife is telling me about it my husband is telling me about it my friends are waiting for me to do it my colleagues keep on reminding me about it what is that frog do that first or at least take a step to do it as procrastinators uh, are taught to do take the first step into doing it commit to doing it or shoot out a mail or say say to someone we are meeting and discussing about this so take that first step eat that frog one more tip you know they say that um, you can answer and tell me who is good at multitasking men or women gentlemen or ladies please answer in the chat uh, and do it yes john jackson uh, the first task is the toughest do the toughest task first then you'll enjoy the rest of your day please put it in the chat who are better at multitasking women rajiv menon says women john jackson says women you're very chivalrous all of you now noel samuel says women the point is you know the point is men varun says men uh, the point is actually let me tell you a truth no one is good at multitasking maybe ladies are slightly better because of the way their brain functions but the truth is human beings our brain cannot do multitasking nidhi james you're saying ladies i know that all you ladies are saying ladies and most of the men also are saying ladies you may be slightly better but the research says that our brain cannot do multitasking just the other day i preach about it okay but a meeting was going on and uh, it was very boring so i started answering emails and i did a blunder in my email if the meeting is boring say it's boring or say give some reason why you need to come out of that meeting but don't do other things during the meeting uh, you love doing things when the pastor is preaching no focus on one thing at a time multitasking actually increases your stress and then exercising and uh, very important pray before at the start of the day at the end of the day pray before every important task you know that's how you should do it pray do the task focus on it logically complete and then thank god for his favor and for giving you the skill uh, there is yuma konyak who says he can't hear it properly and uh, can someone in the uh, wonderful technical team of uh, uh, gls kindly reach out to him vinesh yes i i'm i'm so glad that you're saying want to adapt to monotasking mr john lal also is not able to hear the sound technical team if you can kindly take about uh, take care of these two people thank you so much um let me just move on as i promised you a little bit about positive mental health exercising sleep so important doing activities you enjoy staying connected with people at this time we started on the 23rd of march an extended family prayer across many cities and many countries and we've been doing it very religiously and uh, it's a great way of staying in touch with the people whom you love do that and uh, managing stress we talked about it problem solving thinking in a helpful way of how you can help others also reduces your own strength and increases your positive mental health now um bobby is asking you brother john lal to refresh your browser and that could be a tip to everyone now i have put some of the tips here to good physical health but as i asked you before please put down some tips here but one condition don't preach and say this is good for health uh, don't say that uh, i uh, reduce your eating or eat very healthy where where whereas you are a person a pastor like me who loves eating biryani and uh, who believes that every meeting should end with eating if that is the case i should not put the tip uh, there okay and um, 
uh, please take care. Some people are not uh, having the audio yet. So some of the tips that I put out here, but I'll quickly read it through and I'll look for your tips and I'll read out your tips too. Sleep, very important. Eight hours of sleep, very important. Maybe slightly lower if you're in the age side, but at least seven to eight hours of sleep, very important. Drinking lots of water, you know that. Physical exercise. Take a walk like Gina Joseph uh, says. Jackson John says, morning walk has been refreshing for me. Physical exercise is very important. Even chess players, you think it's a mental game, right? They do exercise. You see the exercise regimen of Vishwanath and Anand, you'll know what I'm speaking, you know? And uh, take, taking legitimate breaks is uh, really good. Morning walk, consuming lot of fluid. Stephen, yes, I like it. Lalit Raichur is saying, I agree with you, it's very difficult for me saying vegetarian, vegetarianism, which comes to healthy habits, a whole lot of healthy habits. You are already putting it here. Gardening is helpful, Vilas, I agree on that. A diet is really important. Even if you eat a lot, eat very sensibly with the nutrition, having a mix of, you know, the right nutrition that you need to have. And there's plenty of advice there. I don't have to go into it. You know, uh, games are mental exercise, but don't go overboard on that, Peter Jacob. Uh, Call of Duty is not what you have to do the whole day. I hope you're not meaning those kind of games. Uh, but yes, oh, you're meaning the chess. Yes. Uh, and uh, strict stop time for work, Gina. Uh, good sleep, important, Vinay. Yes. Learn new things like music. I know during this lockdown time, I know a person who has uh, learned uh, keyboards. Correct posture at work, very important. Uh, diet and laughing are my tips. So there are a whole lot of tips. The point I want to say is, and I'm repeating this like a parrot today. Uh, follow those tips, write down, right now. Can you do it right now? I'm going to end in a few moments. Can you do it right now? You know, just uh, make sure that you uh, write down some new habit that you will start in your pads. I'm going to ask you to show it. No, I'm not going to ask you to show it, but please write down. Household chores is a good exercise and it improves the relationship with your spouse also, Philip. Please tell your spouse that you're going to do more of it now. And uh, intermittent fasting is a wonderful term, Stephen. I read a lot about it and uh, it says 12 to 14 hours of fasting so that your body starts burning up the fat. It's a great tip. A lot of tips are available there. I just want to close now in a minute because I want to give more time for a Q&A. Um, I have covered some good working habits also while talking about mental and physical health. Ira, deep, deep breathing is uh, true. Praveen, yes. Walking, listening to the webinar is considered multitasking. No. Walking, you don't have to deploy your brain. brain. It is you know, uh, it's a subconscious activity. It's something that you are unconscious but competent in, in the learning curve. No, you're not consciously competent. It's unconsciously competent. Those things you can, those are not called multitasking. It does not occupy your brain. Staying awake till very late, eating, snacking a lot in the nighttime, unhealthy habits. I have to have healthy habits like intermittent fasting. I want to say that this is actually a time of commitment. You become a better person by following some good habits. Uh, please take this seriously. I said it in a very easy manner, but there's so many things that we covered. But resolve to follow some of these. Even if you write down three of these things that you're going to follow from now on, you will improve your mental health, your physical health, and the way you work. So I'm going to close here.